Where did you get this picture from? You went digging. I don't even know where this picture went. I don't even remember this picture. Before we start the video, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN provider which allows you to surf the web securely and privately. And it does so by allowing you to change your virtual location so that you're not bound by your location's internet restrictions. So what does that mean? Something a lot of people don't know is that the internet that you experience is different based on where you are in the world. And that includes limitations that might be placed on you that aren't placed on other people. So let's say, for example, you want to see what the Netflix looks like in the UK, or a certain website is not available in your state, or you get that pop-up on YouTube that says this video is not available in your country. By using a VPN like Surfshark, you can just make a couple clicks and change your virtual location. And that way, you're not bound by the internet restrictions based off where you are in the world. There are no borders online thanks to Surfshark. And all the while, your data is not being tracked or worse, sold to other companies. And I know there's a lot of VPN services out there, so why not choose one that has tens of thousands of positive reviews and one that supports a lot of your favorite creators like me and we have a special deal for my audience you can use the link down below surfshark.deals slash maddie or use my code m-a-d-d-y and get three extra months free again that link is in the description and with that we move on to the video hi guys welcome back to give it to me straight i'm your host maddie morphosis and an on-stage question we have contestant number 12 <laughs> representing <laughs> Season seven and All Stars three, Miss Kennedy Davenport. Hey girl, I just clocked that. <laughs> well, hi. Hello, welcome hi. to the show. Thank you for joining me. No problem. I'm glad we could work it out. Yeah, I'm glad we could. Well, I'm, I can work it out. I film from home. I'm glad you could work it out because you're the one with the busy schedule. You just flew in from LA. Yeah. Drag Race Live right after this. Yes. Looking yes. blessed. Yes. Hey. Yes. <laughs> I I'm, I will not complain. I'm grateful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot on you though. That's why I like started working out you know trying to get my body back in condition mm -hmm. so i won't be so tired you're starting to feel the effects of like the years of uh splits and dips and kicks. oh yes yes i mean i even i mean i started feeling that early like in my early 30s mm -hmm. but it the more and more you perform the more and more you don't stretch mm -hmm. it gets you together it's just like <laughs> you're slowly just the wheels are about to fall off soon oh yeah yeah <laughs> now the wheels just about to get tight you know they're not squeak you know they're not you know or it might have or well oiled machine. Yeah, they're anymore. squeaking. They're squeaking. Yeah. People at your show, they sent close enough to the front rolling here like the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real. You're like you're gonna be like the tin man of drag. Yes. Yeah. For real. <laughs> but does this dress look familiar to you? Do you recognize this at all? No. I wore this for you. This is the dress that I wore at Newcomer twenty nineteen where you were actually my judge. Oh wow. Yeah, a long time ago. Wow. I know it was a prelim. It was a prelim night dress. I wore a different one for final night, and you hated that one according to the score sheet. But, but this looked lovely. Thank you. You you placed it well on the score sheet too. So I was like, let me wear that one. I know mm -hmm. she likes that one. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, you know, I have to. You know, like I didn't know you then, so you know, mm -hmm. I have to be fair, and I hope that my score sheets, the you know, my critiques were, you know, you could understand them and yeah, and they, they were consistent with the other judges. So yeah, it yeah. wasn't pointed or anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I I don't. I, you know. When I judge, I don't, I don't be trying to get nobody mm -hmm. because I'm still in the same field. You know, yeah. I I still compete and stuff, and I try to still treat people how I would want to be treated. That's in every aspect. Well, that's life. judging on the score sheet. Judging people in general is a little different, though, yeah, right? I don't judge people at all. No, no. Oh, you just no. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. So I don't. only Judy can judge us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that boy. But yeah, at, at that pageant that I competed in, you actually said something, and it was something that was so jarring to me. It stuck with me all these years. I remember it so vividly. It was at registration, and to all the contestants, you were the reigning Miss U.S. of A, mm -hmm. and you told everyone, you said, drag is not fun. Drag is a lot of hard work. And at that time, I remember, like, I was just having a good time, and Hey, Kennedy, do you like doing drag? <laughs> you actually like doing drag. Is that the question? Yeah. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> like, do you like your girlfriend all the time? All the time. All, the all day, time. every it's day. A it's a fucking lie, bitch. <laughs> She's right in the other room. That's the answer I got to give. But I, remember, I, I remember you said that, and I, like, you were like, drag is not fun. You said it more than once. Like, it is not fun. And I was like, because she like a lot this? of the reason why is because a lot of people get in this profession mm -hmm. and they just see the glitz and glam of it. And of course, we make it look fun. We make it look glamorous and stuff, but it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And you just can't 
hop in a pageant or hop your ass on the show and like without putting thought into it, without putting hard work and your time into it. Mm -hmm. So like I tell people, I'm the worst person to ask for advice because I'm going to give you the hardest advice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because drag is not for everybody. And it's and it gets harder and harder because so many people are doing it now, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's so accessible. Back when I back when I started, it wasn't as accessible because we didn't have the internet, we didn't have you know those type of uh, social media outlets that could you know make it easy for us to get in drag mm -hmm. and you know. So I just tell I just tell them the truth. It is not fun. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about what I do. It is my passion. I I love drag and I love my career. But sometimes I don't like the shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you like it today it's not fun of course you know i i mean when i'm doing what i'm supposed to su supposed to do mm -hmm. that's what that's what make it all worth it and mm -hmm. then at the end of the day the bills don't stop coming and the family needs don't mm -hmm. stop coming so i have to put on my big girl panties and just do the work <laughs> Well, you've always had like a very like strong work ethic. Is that something that was instilled in you like from your family or like schooling? Because I know the school you went to, you actually went to school, your high school was an art school, mm -hmm. very strict about the rules and dress codes and everything. So like little baby Ruben, like that's you in the picture there. This bitch, is your dance this. team. Is it your time in that school that really instilled your work ethic or is that like from your family? Where did you get this picture from? You went digging. I don't digging. even know where this picture went. I don't even remember this picture. Oh, Lord. Now, ask the question again. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the, your work ethic that you have, that's something that was instilled in you, like, in from that school? Oh, yeah. From school. From, yeah. I, I've had very good teachers from elementary all through high school. They, back then, they were like your parents. Mm -hmm. So, they went over and beyond to make sure the... Um, the people of color was doing the right what we were supposed to do mm -hmm. especially in elementary school i had like every teacher every female teacher was my mother honey you know mm -hmm. so the work ethic definitely came uh, and played a big part in it because they taught us this people like erica badu and a lot of uh famous people come from there but she was the main one that really came and spoke mm -hmm. to us and stuff but in order to reach where she was or to get to where they were, we knew that it's a certain kind of discipline you got to have and a certain kind of dedication. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, yeah, it definitely came from the school mm -hmm. and the military, too, because I was wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask about the military. We'll jump in that in a second. But talking about your high school, like I said, Erica Badu went there. Laganja Estranja actually went to the same high school mm -hmm. also. Raja, too. Raja, too. Oh, I didn't yeah. know about Raja. Yeah. But in the like the notable like the list of like alumni like people that have gone on to win like Grammys accomplishments been mm -hmm. on shows and stuff like Nora Jones Nora Jones like mm -hmm. uh, you and Lagandra uh, you and Lagandra the drag queens they weren't listed on the notable alumni it's, do you think it's because of, like the art style you went into the field you went into or I'll, I I'm shocked that I wasn't because they always yeah. recognize yeah. me <laughs> they got you on the Wikipedia page but not on the website well they always um recognize me i've done a lot of out of i've went back and done a lot of work with them mm -hmm. more so than any other other drag race girls that have you know I, I i always try to go back and give give back my time mm -hmm. if the, if my time permits i always go back yeah so the, i even was t taking class at one point but my favorite teacher don't work there anymore so i was like whatever which one was that none of my dance teachers are there anymore no no the uh, dr james dr james you know oh you've been You've been in my business. <laughs> but yeah, that was my favorite teacher. And she retired. So mm -hmm. I was like, ain't no reason to be trying to go. But <laughs> but they called me. I mean, I was in a school production a few years ago with them. But I, I, that's just a shocker to me because even like on social media, they'll put us up as one of the success stories. Mm -hmm. But like uh, talking about your like your high school, um, like the, all the strict rules and everything. Whenever you join the military, like the strict rules they have there, like in the Navy, did it feel almost like an extension of your high school experience? I think college was more of an, an extension of my high school experience. That's why I didn't stay. Uh, <laughs> you said I already did this, right? Because usually, <laughs> when you go to college, you go 
for a different experience. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's a totally different world. But it was just like clocking back in at Booker T. I was like, Mm-mm, no, no, I'm not doing it. But the military was more, I think, was a more of a focus on me outside of drag mm-hmm. and just getting my mind back right and focused and putting that discipline back into my life mm-hmm. and learning to um, follow more. Um, I, Cause I've, I accepted my role as a leader a long time ago and I just didn't always want to be, I just didn't want to be in the limelight all the time. So that's part of the reason why I joined the, joined the Navy, you know, cause I want, I, you know, I, I never thought I was better than anybody, but I was always just pushed in their limelight. Mm-hmm. When you joined the military, also it was like 2003. That was like right as like the U.S. was like in another war. Like, were you worried about like the timing of everything? I wasn't. No. I wasn't at all. Um, and then people felt what well, some people failed to understand. Like, work in the military is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to war, because they need active duty people in the reserve centers, they need active duty people at the duty stations within the states. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So my job was a, a reserve center in Miami. Mm-hmm. So I okay. was active duty at a reserve center. Okay. Yeah. But like it's something too, like with the Navy, it offered like long-term prospects essentially. Oh yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's many jobs. Like the Navy has a list of jobs that you could apply for. It's just mm-hmm. like a regular job, but you have to score a certain, a, a, you know, you have to score a certain number um, to get those jobs. Like the so like, Yeah, like you take the test and then they'd be like, okay, this is what you qualify for. You got to pick one of these, mm-hmm. you know, and I took the old, good old admin assistant, baby. No, you, you scored high. <laughs> some I was like in the middle, girl. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you know, I was you, never a good score taker. I mean, I mean, test taker. Yeah. Um, but you know, you scored bad when they say infantry. <laughs> okay. That's all you got. Yeah. 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 Like you dumb as rocks. We can't trust you on the computer. Well, you want to take that again? How about that? <laughs> but with the military, like, despite like the future prospects, you actually can't go back to the military because you were discharged. Mm-hmm. And although you were given like one reason, why do you feel that you were discharged? What do you think the actual reason was for that? Well, it was a lot of thing that, things that came into play. Like, during that time, I was in a, um, a domestic, um, violent relationship. Mm-hmm. And dealing with that and dealing with um, people at, at, in my workplace who were not very positive towards me as a junior because I was the only junior at, at my command. And there was a lack of leadership. There was a lack of chain of command, which we were drilled on in boot camp. Like boot camp was everything. Like I, I mean, I soared in boot camp. But when you get to that duty station, you're dealing with real people. Mm-hmm. And my at the time, my chief was um, he was about to retire, so he didn't give a shit. You know, so they would just throw work at me. So over the course of the time that I was there. I mean, I was in a state of depression. So, like, I would, I would had, you know, they was out. By the time my, I had a new chief in, they was already trying to get rid of me. But the new chief was like, "No, I want to, I want to get to know him for myself." And she ended up being my best friend, like a best friend. So, um, I had some allies, but it was more problems. And I was, and they was using me coming in late all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, because I was still partying and I just didn't care, you know, during that time. I just didn't care because I didn't feel like they didn't care about me. Yeah. So I kind of put myself in a position or put them in a position where they had to do their job. And that was, listen, they because it was the day before my birthday and they was like, Asbury, if you come in late, you go on the captain's mask. I was like, bitch, fuck y'all, I'm finna go, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm it's finna go birthday. have me, I'm finna go have be some fun. Mm-hmm. So I ended up coming in late again, um, the day on my birthday. And I got chewed out and the lieutenant at the time told me that I discussed him and to get out of his office. And I was like, what do I look like going back to sit down to work and produce work that reflects this office and I discuss somebody? 
you know so at lunchtime i just left and didn't come back because of that is like discharge and now you can't go back to the military was there like other reasons behind that no it was no other reasons um because during that time we were still we were still under don't ask don't tell so it didn't really have anything to do with me being gay i think their actions like some of the hetero mm -hmm. actions may have been but it was just never said because it was don't ask don't tell mm -hmm. but i don't think i was i was never disrespected on those type of levels you know because mm -hmm. i came in i did my job i minded my business i did my job well mm -hmm. you know but it was just an uh, other than honorable discharge because what what else you going to get me for yeah you know but i didn't get a captain's mask i didn't sign my dd-214 things custom things that were supposed to happen didn't happen so i'm still in the process of appealing Oh, okay. So that's still like an ongoing thing. Yeah. If you end up getting that appeal, do, do you see a career back in the military in some regard? Well, I'm too old. Okay. So yeah, you, you have to be a certain age to be in. Be, but I could. But if I wanted to, I can work for the government. Mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I get all of my benefits and stuff yeah. back. Did you come from a military family? My my grandfather, my uncle, and my grandmother's brother, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But my grandfather didn't stay in long because of his sin, his sight. Um, my uncle, I don't know how long he stayed in, but he stayed in long enough to take a picture. <laughs> he got his picture? Yeah. He made it to picture day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if your family wasn't a military family, they were like an artistic family of sorts because your dad uh, was actually a suit maker. Mm -hmm. And he actually he even made like suits for you whenever you competed for like male pageants. Mm -hmm. He didn't make that suit? But um, um, he was tagged in it, so I assumed. Um, probably because whenever I did anything as Ruben mm -hmm. or in my male persona, I always tagged him and my mom because my mom loves it. Mm -hmm. She loves when I, you know, do male shows and stuff like that. But he has made suits like that for me. So is he like where you first started to learn how to like sew and like make things? Girl, you know I don't sew. Well, I mean, you, still, uh, you can put together a dress. Hell you know? no. Little small things carry over. I make do. You make do. Okay. <laughs> she don't make dresses. She makes do. Like, you know, push come to shove, I can try. Like, you know, drag race. Uh -huh. You know, when you under pressure, <laughs> you make it work. Yeah. But as far as like sewing and stuff, no, that's not me. Mm -hmm. No. But he, I mean, my dad was awesome. I mean, he taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to dress. He taught me how, you know, to um to look your best at all times and i can definitely take that away uh, take that away from you know him um being really influential in my life as mm -hmm. a man is he where you also got your love of singing because like a lot of people don't realize is that you actually sing as well and your dad actually sang in the church choir yeah but my dad was not a soloist right he, ensemble like, but yeah he would yeah he, and it would be so funny because he just would want he would like oh my god he would really want to like sing a solo i'm like daddy you are not a soloist okay <laughs> but i really got like my singing from my mom um i really think i'm the only one in my family that really pursued my talent like my mom could sing, but she didn't mm -hmm. pursue a career for singing. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And for your family, a lot of it either stayed as hobbies or at the church, but you're the only one that actually made a career and I'm more out one, of it. And I'm the one that they pushed mm -hmm. to do so. Yeah. Well, they were always like really supportive of your drag. Were they really supportive of you and your sexuality whenever you were younger? Um, I had, a, I, you know, as kids, we always have problems, you know, mm -hmm. bullying and stuff like that. And I went through all of that. But as as a family, like... My mom's side was more receptive and accepting um, and than my dad's side, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I really never had major problems in my family as a kid growing up as far as my sexuality. Um, but the but once I grew up, you know, and really got into the profession, the more um, I am respected in my household and. Um, my family loved me, <laughs> and they're, they're very appreciative on both sides mm. of um, my contribution to keeping our family together and, you know, taking care of everybody. Mm -hmm. 
So speaking of your sexuality, I've seen you po post on Facebook before alluding to it, but are you actually like bisexual? I am. Um, but I'm just, I, I tell them too, like I, I am bisexual. I still, I, I still love women. I'm still attracted to women. I'm very picky when it comes to women. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, like with guys, like, you know, anybody you throw at you. But yeah, I, but, it, but it's a little bit more laxed. But with women, I expect a lot from women because I'm going to be a certain way with them. And that, and that's even in, in uh, you know, in, in, uh, with men too. If, I expect a lot is because I'm going to give a lot. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fair. It's valid. Yeah. But yeah. I was hard on my girlfriends in high school. Like, they came home. If, if, if they came to school looking a mess, you know, they got red. Yeah, I let them have it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't come to school. Because I came to school dressed every day. If you with me, you got to look right. And I would even, like, my last real girlfriend in high school, I, I like, bought her clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like, I think a lot of girls I've seen online, they, you know, fantasize about having, like, a feminine boyfriend that can help them pick out pick out outfits, but you were the one that's just reading them down for wearing something ugly. Yeah, like, yeah. no, why do you, or not even, not even wear something ugly, but just not caring about your appearance. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with your hair today? Like, you don't want to do nothing to it? Mm -hmm. You know, and why did, why is you just coming in with, you know, you're not in gym, why is you got on windbreakers in a you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I, that just wasn't me yeah, yeah. That, that's why you're picky with women because you need to find someone that can handle harsh critiques yeah you give them too. scorecards yeah <laughs> <laughs> but on, on the topic of your family uh, your dad actually passed away in 2013 mm -hmm. and along with that there was a bunch of other issues including like the fact that he didn't leave behind a will and mm -hmm. it ended up leading to like a huge legal battle over like the house essentially what happened was I didn't know anything about the house itself. Mm -hmm. So what I was doing was just paying the mortgage. So I'm just paying the mortgage. Everything is okay. Paying the bills. Both our names are the same. So I kept all the utilities in his name and just was paying it. Then I get a letter in the mail says, oh, you have balloon payment of over $25,000 and it's due on such and such date. And I'm like, I don't have $25,000. So that's where that's that's where the big problem came in because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know nothing about mortgages. I didn't know nothing about financing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What, what year were you on Drag Race? I was um, Drag Race came about two fourteen two thousand fourteen. Okay. Fifteen. So it was like right as Drag Race happened. Yeah. So I was deep battling with the house as well as battling for the guardianship of my sister. Mm -hmm. Like it was a lot. It was a lot, and I seriously needed help because, yeah, I was working, but I wasn't liked on my season, so I was limited with limited with working, and it was just a lot that came into play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I set up the GoFundMe for help, and I did a huge benefit show where some of the Drag Race girls came out, like Shangela and Jasmine and Jaden and mm -hmm. Latrice. You know, they came together to help me. Um, come up with this money but it was serious mm -hmm. you know but it all worked out I got the house paid for and I got the guardianship of my sister all of it worked out and we was it was like 2015-16 mm -hmm. so that was just like it, it was like a whole year of a mess it was almost like all the stuff you learned with like logistics and legal stuff with wills and trusts and stuff is almost like a, a final lesson of sorts like yeah. one more thing for you to yeah. learn and that was then this was after he was gone yeah but like as a child losing those um childhood things that everybody do i didn't get to do because i had a sister to take care of to help take care of mm -hmm. and that was a huge responsibility in itself as well as being this talented kid performing all over Dallas and the United States, mm -hmm. um, it was a lot on me as a kid, you know. But being the age that I was then when he passed away, it all just came together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you was born for this, you know. And as, as I said earlier, like this was all being taken care of on a drag queen salary. Where were you at in your drag career when all this was happening? Uh, you mean after Drag Race or before? Well, like around the same time. Like it's we'll, we'll say like before because this was like right after. Again, like you said, after Drag Race, 
you weren't as well liked on the season, not as many opportunities were coming in. So like, where were you at in life? 2013, 2014. Well, I moved back home 2011, the end of 2011. And I was glad because I had been in Florida since 2003. So I moved home 2011 to, and that's where me and my father's relationship groomed. Mm -hmm. And I think we came together even more and bonded even more because he was a struggling artist too. Mm -hmm. And I was a struggling artist. Like, regardless of how good I, I danced, they weren't willing to pay what I felt like my worth was at mm -hmm. the time. So here I am still doing free shows, you know, because I just got back home and trying to get my foot in the door. So it was a struggle then. And then once the show aired and you know promoters how they are, like you, how you are portrayed on the show affects your work. It does. So um, that was a struggle within itself and on top of dealing with fans because I dealt with fans. I didn't ignore them. You know, I, 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 took the bull by its, by its horns and got out there to prove that, you know, I'm, it's, it was more to me than what you saw in season seven. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Yeah, because I would say, like, even though you weren't received as well during uh, season seven, like, I think now I think it's safe to say, like, you're one of the, you know, one of the darlings of the franchise. Like, everyone loves Kennedy. <laughs> I, I mean, and I'm grateful for that. I mean, I worked hard for that. Like, mm -hmm. the, the hundreds, um, thousands of followers, I worked for that. Mm -hmm. Like, my Twitter was like <laughs> 20,000, you know, mm -hmm. or even not probably even that. Uh, like I was in the single thousands, mm -hmm. you know, and I worked and I danced my ass off and I made sure that like I was engaging at the meet and greets and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff to, you know, to build that. Well, another struggle that you went through during your life was like your struggle with drug addiction, like mm -hmm. substance abuse. Is that something that was exacerbated by the drag scene and like the nightlife? You mean like capitalized, like drag was the reason? Not saying that drag was the reason, but I mean, you could if drag was the reason, I or mean, was the, it made it was worse? The, but it was the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So um, I indulged in it because of a relationship I was in. And it was... It was a coping mechanism at the time, and it was part of the reason, well, I did it because that was, I felt that was the only way I could be around him, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we partied and stuff together. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, yeah, because I, I mean, I had a job, but the weekend came, and I had to get my weed, I had to get my, you know, my ecstasy, I had to get my cocaine, I had to get it all, baby, you know, and that was the, that was the life, life of the party, but... I, all of this came to an end before I was even 21 years old. I was going to ask, was this like at the time, like whenever you were like in the military or like early no, in your this drag? Was, this was early. Okay. And, and I'm grateful because sometimes things happen in your life to prepare you, mm -hmm. you know, for your life ahead. And that I'm a prime example. Like, had I not gone through what I'd gone through... Uh, what I went through, I probably wouldn't be alive because drag race puts you on a pedestal or puts you in an environment that's full of drugs and entertainment and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And you don't have the discipline to say no or the the um, the, the not, I don't even want it. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have that desire to not, you know, to not want to be a part of it, then I probably would have been dead because of how much I did it. Like when I did it, I did it. Was the military something that helped you get out of that? Or was it something else that made you realize no, you needed to turn everything around? It was, for me, it was divine intervention. Like I am a believer and um, I do believe in Jesus Christ. And I am, you know, I have a relationship with him. And it's because of what I went through with the drugs. That's why I, mm -hmm. I tell everybody is it was it, it was divine intervention. Like yeah. I saw the light and everything. Was there like a certain moment, the certain day or night that you remember that made you made that like that switch? Yeah, it, could, it was the night that my life flashed before my eyes that I knew that at that moment I was not going to make it, mm -hmm. and I just pleaded for my life. Like nothing in this world mattered. So being a kid raised in the church, you know, 
all of it don't make sense until you actually experience it. Mm -hmm. It's not about church. It's about your personal experience with Christ and everything that makes it, that makes you believe. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I believed. And that's when I took the time to indulge and read and study and pray and fast and all that kind of stuff to develop the relationship. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to go to the Navy. I need to rediscipline myself. Okay, so, so the Navy was almost like a side effect of that rather than the other way around. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I assume like the Navy was something that disciplined you out, but you went to the Navy because you're like, I need to get back on track. Yeah, and I, and I did. It was just mm -hmm. a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just a part of it. I really felt like that was um, a true sign from God that that was the direction I needed to go. And it, and it, and it put me where I, where I wanted it to be. You probably don't view things that happen in your life as mistakes because all these things led you to where you are today. Yeah. But what do you think was a bigger mistake in your life? Like your descent into drug addiction or this hair? Baby, that was in back in the day. The little blonde hair. Yes. You look like, have you ever seen a... That was the that 90s. Movie? That was the 90s, Miss Thing, your young ass. <laughs> this little uh, blonde hair. You don't like it? I mean, it's... I, uh, I'd wear it because it's camp. Listen, I... Little listen, baby. Let me tell you something. Soak it in. I was a junior in high school, mm -hmm. and I was the life of the party. Did your dad make that suit? Yes. Yeah, he made this suit. I was like, I was a life for the party. Like I was already living my life. Like I have like schoolmates still, like I used to have schoolmates that like thanked me for being mean because mm -hmm. now they out, you know, they, they, the people didn't have the courage to be out. Mm -hmm. You know, I was out. I was out. I was living my best life. I was very fashion forward, you know. But you always had sugar in your tank. Yeah. Like from day one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, but I thought I was that. That was I was a T. I don't know what you're talking about. That was the that was the nineties. It was in this the nineties. Like, this is one of my favorite pictures. I, you know, I saw the little hair. I was like, wait a minute. I was you like, need why, to blow it up. I was like, why does she look like? Yeah, we'll put it on there for for them to see. I was like, why does she look like the bad guy from like what's that movie? Um, the Lorax. I think it was. Oh my a little mayor. Oh my god. Uh, anyway. Oh my god. I digress. Uh, Those were happy times. Was it? Those were happy times because before everything. I didn't have any problems then. That's when I had finally came out. Mm -hmm. And when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just live this life, live it to the fullest, and just keep. I wasn't doing like hard drugs, but I was smoking weed, mm -hmm. you know. But it, it. Those were good times. It, and but also during that time, me and my father was not seeing eye to eye. Like we would, we would get along sometimes, not all the time, because I really just wanted to live my life and he wouldn't let me. And, you know, and he was really more concerned when we graduated. He was like, just graduate. After that, you can do what the hell you want to do. Mm -hmm. And this is, those were his words. Yeah. You know, so he kind of let up after I graduated. Uh, so somewhere you really exceeded outside of like school and a drag race was pageantry. Mm -hmm. Do you even know how many titles you've won? Last time I counted... <laughs> Um, a little bit over thirty. A little over thirty. It might be. It might be a little. Is that is that including like bar titles and stuff too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah. like, I, I saw like a list of the titles you won, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I say, it's a little bit over thirty. It's a, it's it's overwhelming. It's a lot. Yeah. I I mean, during, like like again during that time, we didn't have social media mm -hmm. and no other way to become that girl. Mm -hmm. So you had my like my drag mother just threw me in the pageants mm -hmm. like. And that's what I wanted to do. I mean, that's how you get people from other states to see you. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. get on the VHSs and, you know, mm -hmm. with the state pageants and national pageants. But I still wasn't nationally to compete nationally mm -hmm. yet. You know, I didn't start competing on a national level until about... 11 or 12, 2011 or 12. You're just like patting, patting your drag resume, essentially. Yeah, all up and down. I mean, that's that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. I think of, of all the titles that you won, one of them stood out to me. Mm -hmm. 2014 Miss Universal Latina. Are you Latina? No, girl. <laughs> so what, was the, what was the rules for that? There were no rules. Oh, they said... It you... was a pageant, and she didn't have any contestants. <laughs> she didn't have any contestants in 
that in the city mm. of Dallas. Like the contestants came from other places. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that inquired about being a part of her system. Mm -hmm. You know, so she didn't get she when I beat everybody. Uh, they didn't. She didn't get slack about it until after I won. So yeah. she changed the rules after I won. Yeah, because I know the rule now. It's like you either have to be Latina or be able to speak fluent Spanish. Yes. I saw you on the poster. I was like, she got Latina somewhere? Or yeah. like, she speaks Spanish? Yeah. I saw I saw a show poster, 2014. They're all in Spanish. Well, they were so mad, girl, because I beat them bad. <laughs> I beat them girls bad. Like, I'm, I'm probably like... One, it was probably like two or three sprinkles of people, uh, black folk mm -hmm. in the page at the pageant, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only black in the back outside of my dresser, <laughs> dressing me for the pageant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was Dallas. It was still my city, and it was still an opportunity. And I look, and I, this how I looked at it. It was still my opportunity to be known. Like the club it was at booked me. You know, mm -hmm. so I needed them to see what I could do. And it was just, that's, that's a part, that was a part of it. Mm -hmm. Like networking. It was a part of the networking. Like all the titles you've won. On top of that, you also are now a national promoter. You purchased the US of A, Miss Gay US of A. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel like in the day and age of like social media, Instagram and everything, why do you think that pageantry is still so important in drag? It, it's just like Stonewall. It's just a staple in within our community. It helps it it helped shape a lot of us mm -hmm. you know and i think that's why it's important um it's like a stamp in history of a legacy that always need to be kept alive and what drag queen don't need grooming you know pageants groom you mm -hmm. i don't care who you are you get your little piece of it you know it'll teach you etiquette it'll teach mm -hmm. you how to carry yourself it'll teach you how to walk it'll teach you how to model it'll teach you how to be confident you know and you know that's why i never like i i, I get slightly offended when people call you a pageant queen mm -hmm. you know i'm more than just a pageant queen that's just the route that i took i know i have 34 titles but i'm more than that yeah of course bitch <laughs> But, you know, I, I, you know, everybody got to put a label on something. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is, but it's very important in our community. And I hope that um, the generations now and to come see that importance and just keep it alive. Pageantry being your biggest passion in drag, was Drag Race something that you always wanted to be a part of? Or was it something you felt you needed to do in order to further your goals? That's exactly what it was, because I didn't care about Drag Race. I did not care about no drag race because I just didn't feel like it, it played, like I felt like it wasn't a true example of a bitch getting out there and hustling and trying to make it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the stories and the challenges and all of that started to change and I still wasn't convinced, but it took Sahara and Alexis and Latrice and uh, Alyssa to like, girl, you need to go on and do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, had, I was at a point in my co uh, career where if you was not on Drag Race, they didn't want to hire you. They was not finna book you. If I'm in Dallas, they not finna book you in North Carolina because you're not a rule girl. I had a promoter tell me that. You know, you're not on Drag Race, you know, I can't take the chance. Mm -hmm. You know, my bar, I'm a small bar and and I was just asking for $300 at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, listen, if I'm gonna make this work, I need to go on to make this step. You know, if I'm gonna go mainstream, that's, this is the direction I need to go. And it worked, I got on in one try. Mm -hmm. Well, like one continuous through line through everything you've done is like giving like 110%. And I've even mm -hmm. seen it firsthand where we were doing some shows over a weekend and you had food poisoning. And despite that, like you're backstage looking miserable. You go on the stage bucking and kicking <laughs> like you do, and then immediately go backstage and look miserable again. Yeah. So you power through. So like with that, like always giving 110%, what happened during the fancy lip sync? Uh, I did give 100 and I did give it 100%. Hell, I didn't know the song. <laughs> Shit. And they didn't give me time to learn it. Mm -hmm. You know, I had like, I had a little less than two days. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't get it. And um, 
they they tried to come they you know we tried to find another song but it was the last episode mm -hmm. songs were few and they was just really stuck with fancy and you know let it be known had i learned that she wasn't the one because i can lip sync any song said so they gave you one more day yeah had i had one more day i could have got it because i, I mean i did know the choruses mm -hmm. it was the verses because it's so many words mm -hmm. you know and and being being a musician and being a part of a classical singer and all that kind of stuff where you have to learn music, I read sight, sight read and all of that, you know, it came easy for me to learn music. But that was a hard song. If that's not your culture, mm -hmm. number one, and you don't listen to that kind of music, I, I appreciated the fact that it was a story because it made it easier, easy, a little easy to learn. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a book. Well, like outside of that, like I think almost every lip sync that you did, yeah, I think I think almost every lip sync you did was like by white ladies. Do you think that? Was <laughs> do you think that was deliberate? You think they you were trying are to trip so you up? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and all of the songs that I wanted to do, I didn't do. Uh uh. Like no. I mean, meeting in the ladies' room, like a lot of the songs that the other girls was doing, like all the songs that Jade and Dior Fierce did, I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, because she had the hot numbers. She even she fucked it up though, but I was wanting to dance. Like, yeah. I was wanting them to see what I had. I, you know, I, I feel like it was wasted potential. They keep giving you these songs like Fancy and yeah. Wrecking Ball. Like I feel like people watching Drag Race, they still haven't even got to see like the full potential. When they said Wrecking Ball, bitch, we all looked at each other like, what? They're trying to. And then it was up. like, you want us to do what, Weedy? Okay, well, can y'all make some runs for us? Because we need this and we need that. But it was like... Yeah. I I, <sighs> I think Wrecking Ball is an awful lip sync song. Yeah, me it's too. It's a terrible song. Me too. But, like, it gave me the opportunity to display another passion of mine. Like, I was like, I never did a contemporary. I never, you know, mm -hmm. did any type of professional skilled dance. Yeah. So I, I thought you know, it was a perfect opportunity because mm -hmm. they, they wanted more than just a standing there. Mm -hmm. it, it was interesting because like Trixie is like standing there. She's like slowly yeah. pulling out her hair and you're just twirling behind her. Because that I, literally, that's exactly what they said. They said they wanted some type of production mm -hmm. and, and they just didn't want us to stand there and lip sync the song. That's exactly what they told us. In your opinion, do you think you lost that lip sync? No. No, I don't. I don't think I lost that lip sync. But she pulled her hair. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and I think she knows it was it. dramatic. And they cut a lot of it out to make it seem like it was um, what's the baby name from season four when Latrice did Natural? Oh, Woman. Kenya Michaels. It, and they made it seem like it was that kind of moment, mm -hmm. and it was not. Mm -hmm. Because the whole, the majority of the lip sync, I was standing there mm -hmm. and I was singing and emoting mm -hmm. and, you know, giving it. And then when the chorus came on, that's when I danced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watching it back, it seemed very much like you were just like Tasmanian devil around her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was not the case at mm -hmm. all. Like it was, it was a true moment where we all had to take a moment. You and Trixie still beefing, or y'all better now? No, we're better now. I, I hit her up last year, and it was more so with me because mm -hmm. when I consider you my friend and something go down that wasn't right and I be in my feelings about it, then I just stop fucking with you. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I am because that's at that time, the best thing for you was you to stay out my face. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, as the I think it was like as the, it, the new year came, it was just time to just, you know, because mm -hmm. I still, you know, I loved her. Yeah. You know, and I appreciated our relationship. I just didn't like, you know, how she played the game and mm -hmm. you could at least warn the bitch. So you should have gone uh, old school pageantry and like put glass in her Cody powder and Oh, know. I've never been that way. Like no. you know, I'm square up. Like I'm a fair fighter. Oh, that's, Always that's good. been. Yeah. I don't fight dirty. Even physical. I don't fight dirty. If you're mm -hmm. gonna beat me up, beat me up with your hands, bitch. Mm -hmm. No bottles, just it, it, right. fisticuffs. Yeah. Okay. What would have been your dream lip sync song? You can have one song to perform. What would it have been? Where you would have ate them up. Probably um like I Can't Turn You Loose by uh Aretha Franklin. 
because it's already fast. Mm-hmm. You know, because I have to have a fast. It has to be like mm-hmm. fast, and that's something that I I don't have to be sped up or anything, and I can still like tell the story as well as perform. Like people, these like these young kids these days just think you just go out there and just start flouncing around like a monkey. No, you have to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what drag is about. To have a, have a reason to be doing all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And finding good moments in the music. Yeah. Not just just jumping the split. And, you know, mm-hmm. it annoys me. It really does. Because it, you take away the musicality of the performance. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like less about the song and the story, more about just stunts. Yeah. Yeah. See, that, that's why I don't be doing all those stunts. I'm like, the song doesn't call for it. You know, I'm just waiting for the mo- right moment, you know. But you I have, get it. But you have your stunts, though, which are great. Thank you. Yeah, I, mean, I, I do little tricks. Yes, <laughs> I live, though. That's what, I, that's what makes us all great. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If everybody was, if people would be bored if everybody was dancing. Mm-hmm. People would be bored if everybody uh, doing comedy shit and making stupid, mm-hmm. making fool of themselves. You know, did you see that moment on the Joe Rogan podcast where Miley Cyrus gave you a shout out? Um, she, yes. she, they were because like Joe Rogan was talking about how uh, the drag queens, everything looks the same. They just do the same moves, and mm. she called him out and said, "Well, that's how I feel about your show. It's always yeah. the same shit." Yeah, yeah. Well, what was your moment whenever you saw that on the Joe Rogan? podcast? I really appreciate it. I really appreciated that, and I think I talked to her on Instagram of um, like you know thanked her. And all of that. And mm-hmm. I just hate, I hate that I missed being on the show with her. I think I was like working or something, but mm-hmm. I was first on the list to call to be on the show with her. So the fact that she even knows who I am and was, and really is a great ally for us, you know, that means a lot. So obviously like, your life is extremely different than it was like 20 years ago, like pre and post drag race, like back to when you were taking Greyhound buses to gigs to now yeah. taking flights to gigs. How else has drag and drag race changed your life? Um, it 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 has allowed me to take care of my family, and that's very big for me. I won't say that we were poor, but we were mighty damn close. And I watched my dad work very very hard mm-hmm. to provide for us, and um, and my mom. And her side of the family, I would say the mom and my mom and her side of the family was a little bit less for, um, fortunate mm-hmm. than my dad's side. My dad's had a little bit more money. So I got to see the experience both sides. I, you know, I experienced the syrup sandwiches mm-hmm. and the full, the full meal, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Roasting um, weenies on, over the stove, mm-hmm. you know, pork and beans. And, you know, mm-hmm. I've experienced it all. So um, my mom always reminds me uh, that I promised that I would take care of them when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And, and more so just being there, being the backbone. And I feel like that's, you know, for a long time, um, when I didn't have the position, because my dad had the position, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. Um, I was very a very resentful child. Like I wanted to go and play. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be normal, you know, because mm-hmm. in the eighties, you was a faggot, and you was a sissy, and I didn't know what that was. Like people put me in that category, and I didn't know what it was, you know. So I was very angry and. It all made sense in the end. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I went through all of that stuff because I won't be able to tell my story. I won't be able to lead, you know, and I won't be able to um, help those that are coming after me. Mm-hmm. And that's what the purpose is. And I, any, anywhere I go and I get the microphone, I try to tell people that drag is, we have a higher calling. And once you tap in into your purpose as a drag entertainer, then your life starts to be a lot better because it's not just about you. Mm. You know, even though we love to do what we do and look the way we look, there's a deeper calling, mm. you know. It's not just dress up. It's not. It's not just fun. And, and it's not because, you know, what about that child that comes to you and was like, I was about to kill myself last week. 
But because I heard your story or because you performed End of the Road, mm -hmm. you know, you helped me. Like I've had people come to me crying, like in tears. And like over the course of my career, like this happened. So all of those things point to this is what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm here to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. We all are on this earth to help somebody else. And if you don't think that way, you are a very selfish person and you probably won't live that long. You know? Yeah. Well, speaking of, you know, higher calling, speaking of like family and everything, I feel like this is a good segue because we're almost at the end of the interview, but I wanted to give you something for your time and thank you for coming here. Okay. It's not, un it's not a uh, unspeakable. You're going to be funny, bitch. Huh? You're going to do something. I'm actually part. not. <laughs> I'm actually not. It's not unspeakable okay. joy, but I wanted to give you this. Oh, my this God. How did you know? Explain to the people why Douglas Miller is so important. You've been, you, oh, you've been doing your homework. You have, and you got to tell me where you got this information from. I just would like to know. Uh -huh. but kudos to you. Because your, your dad always played this in the house, right? Yes. Oh, my God. You're going to make me cry. Um, and I wasn't even five years old. Mm -hmm. Like, this was our very first house. And we, like I said, we go to church every Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like, we was in church. But every Sunday... And during this time, it like like your dresser, it used to be a TV. Mm -hmm. And at the top, it lifted up and it was a record player. Mm -hmm. And so every Sunday morning, he would wake us up with, is it on here? It's probably not. Is it Unspeakable Joy? Mm -hmm. Unspeakable Joy. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned it. Like if, like my sister's special needs, but if I play it, we both in here jamming, mm -hmm. you know? So this is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. This means I, so I, I, much to me. I look so far away. I tried to find a vinyl, but it's so hard to find. But I, found, oh, I managed to find like a CD. This is everything. Past be not old. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. But I mean, he really was the source of um, who I am spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because he was, my, my dad was a great leader. And a good father. So this means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, Douglas Miller. <laughs> and with that, that is my last card and the last bit of time we have today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, Kennedy, so uh, you're on Drag Race Live right now until January. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, where can people find you? What do you have going on? Well, you know, they can't let us do too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do Market Days. It's coming up. I don't know when it's going to air, but... <laughs> Sometime. <laughs> yeah, sometime. But, um, I mean, just just look for me. Um, I got Joplin Pride coming up in mm -hmm. Joplin, Missouri in September. My birthday's coming up September the 9th. Mm -hmm. I'll be in Joplin. But um, Oh, your, I, your birthday's uh, September 9th? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're both Virgos. Second. Yeah, see, so. that's why we get along and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, but other than that, I'm here in Vegas. It, that you can reach me on social media, Kennedy Kennedy D D O F T X on all social media forms except Facebook. And you just type in Kennedy Davenport and talk to me. Say hi. I'll answer all my, my messages and stuff. With your username, uh, Kennedy D D, uh, is is your do you have a middle name that's like it starts with a D? No. What do the D stand for? Dancing Diva. Dancing Diva. Okay, yeah. I thought it was like Kennedy D Davenport. Or something. Uh, no, it's Kennedy D D O F T X. Oh. Okay. I, I thought we were about to have a revelation. Your name was Kennedy Diane Davenport the whole time. Uh, uh, no, no uh -uh. not quite. <laughs> no, just Kennedy Davenport. Is it true you eat an apple every night? No. Okay, you made a Facebook status or something about a nightly apple, and I was like, does she eat an apple every day. Because my doctor said I needed to increase my fiber intake. This is oh. before I came here. Okay. So she was like, you need to eat some more fiber. I was uh -huh. like, okay. So Metamucil and an apple. Mm -hmm. I got a sponsor coming up. It's, gonna, it's for Colon Broom. I'll hook you up with a discount code. I'll, okay. I'll get you together. Okay. I'll get you right. Yes. <laughs> but thank you. This means so much to me. And I'm thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Like yeah. I said, I know you booked and busy. Like you, You're right in between your flights and your show and stuff. So I appreciate you taking the time and... Let me dig into your personal life and get to know you a little better. But yeah, that's yeah. what we. That's why we live in it. We live in it to share it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, whatever you ask me, I'm gonna answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anything is too you know personal. Mm -hmm. 
It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Uh, some things. You know, some things. Uh-uh, Good. not for me. <laughs> I had Rockamon here, and she told me too much. I didn't even want to hear about it. Oh, my it. God. Like, no. I'm very everyone... transparent. If you come out, I own, I own the things that I do. I own what I say. And that's why I, I read myself before y'all read me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So I'm already there. Yeah. You can catch up. Yeah. 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 You give yourself score sheets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thank you guys so much for watching join us next time whenever we have somebody else and yeah till then <laughs> bye thank guys thank you bye y'all <laughs>